Hey, Michael Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. In today's video, I'll be doing a review and how to play video on Drinking Quest Old Habits. So let's get into it. So Drinking Quest Old Habits is a combination of a drinking party game with an old school tabletop RPG. So think Dungeons and Dragons, but a little more simplified and then a fun twist with some drinking elements and humor that you might encounter on a quest adventure while drinking. And so there's a lot of different puns in this game and scenarios that you might encounter on a night out in the town with your friends with some light RPG elements mixed in as well. Also note that you don't necessarily need to drink to play the game. I think it's a little more fun potentially playing it that way, but there are different variants where you can play where you might act as the all-time dungeon master and control all the monsters and read all the cards if you happen to not be drinking. Or there's another variant, for example, where you might be forced to chug a full glass of water and then there's a penalty every time you have to go to the bathroom Room, uh, instead of drinking. And so I think this is definitely a 21 plus game for sure, but really anyone can enjoy it whether you're drinking or not. But let's dive into how you play the game so you get a better understanding on how the game works. And then I'll jump into my review after that. All right, guys, now that we got the game out, let's jump in and show you how to play Drinking Quest Old Habits. All right, so the first step of the game is to actually choose your characters that you wanna play as for the quest. And so depending on how many players you're playing with, you have a lot of different options to choose from. They're all pretty funny as well, where each character is going to have their own set base of stats that you get to use as well as a signature drink which is kind of a special ability that they have so here's for example the annoying sidekick and then they have a bland screwdriver and so what you'll do is you'll choose a character and then you'll go here and then just fill out your name the hero's name the maximum hit points that they have the different stats and abilities that they have from their attack to defense to self-worth smarts tolerance and sexual prowess and then any items that you start the game with. So usually a character is going to start with a specific starting weapon, and so you can write that down here. And so that can determine your attack, defense, and more depending on the items that you have. So once all the players have been selected, you'll just simply move into the actual gameplay, which is playing the quest. So the objective of the game is to get the most XP or experience by the end of the game to become the drinking quest champion. And so in order to do that, you will face various different challenges and monster fights. And when you defeat monsters or complete challenges, it might do things like improving your stats on your character, or it could also give you experience and gold for defeating monsters. And so now that you've picked your character, there's various different quests that you'll go through as you play the game. And again, you don't have to go through all the quests in one play session. We did, and we found that that was pretty fun to be able to do that. And so before you start each quest, have one player read the quest description before you jump into it. So for example, slime time, you fight oozing monsters, find sticky treasure chests, avoid slimy salesmen, and maybe have a slippery sexual encounter or two. It's all about slime, baby. So again, they're all pretty fun, humorous drinking scenarios on a night out on the town. And so how play works is the first player is the person that most recently made a mixed drink. And then what you'll do is you'll start by going through quest one in this case, or whatever quest you happen to be on. And so the player will simply draw the card and then deal with the scenario that's listed on the card. So in this case, Hangover Sludge. Encountering a Hangover Dragon, you must battle the enormous amount of throw up it is hurling through the corridor. Don't spill your beer. And so now this is a monster encounter and so you need to deal with it. And so how this works is that the character that you are will roll the die to see what number you get. So in this case, the five, and now the person to your right will act as the monster. So they will also roll. So in this case, they got a two. And so since the player had a higher number, they will go first. And so you just simply look at your player card and see what attack they have. So in this case, they had a D8 plus one. So you'll take the D8 die, roll it, so they got a four, and then it'll be four plus one, so a total of five. And then you'll go to the monster card in this case and see what kind of defense they had. They have a zero shield, so it'd be five minus zero, so you do five damage. So in this case, the monster still has two HP left. And so now the monster will get a turn, and in this case, they have a D6 for their attack. So they'll roll the D6 die and find that it did five damage. Then you'll go back to your character card, and in this case they have a defense of three, and so it will do 
two damage in total. Five minus three is two. So you'll reduce your hit points down by two. So in this case, the player had one left, so they would actually die. And so what that means is that they would need to finish their drink. And so they don't defeat the monster. And so in this case, they don't gain 30 coins. They don't gain any experience for defeating it. And they needed to finish their drink. Now after that has occurred, the player actually restores their health back to their maximum health. So in this case, Joe would be back to eight. And then it would move on to the next player's turn. And so they would simply go through and draw the next card. So in this case, this one is the secret in the slime. You find a stone tablet with some ancient writing, roll a saving throw for smarts, see if you can decipher it. So this case is called a saving throw, so it's not really a battle per se, but what you're going to do is the card said it was for smarts, so let's just use this character sheet for example again. So they have a smarts of eight, so what happens is I will take all three dice, roll them together, and the added up number needs to be below that eight if I wanna succeed. So in this case, I got one, three, and five, so that's actually nine, so I failed. So what I'll do is I'll go to the card and look at the failure. So you must read some scripture summoning a demon who curses you with weak biceps. You now have minus one attack strength for the next two battles. And so now what happens is I'll have to go to my character card and denote that lack of strength for the next two battles. So we just wrote it up here at the top, for example, two, and then we marked off tallies as we went. So again, pretty simple to play. You're just gonna keep going through the round. As players die, they are forced to finish their drink. But again, you're not really forced to, so you don't have to drink if you don't want to, but that's how you can play the game. And each round, you technically only finish your drink once. So each quest that you're going through, so again, all of quest one, you technically should only be forced to finish your drink one time. After that, just takes three sips of your drink as you play. Also, before each turn, you can go to the store and choose to buy items to add to your inventory. Now, you can only buy items that are associated with your specific character. So if you were playing as Sir Hops, for example, these are the weapons you could buy. You couldn't buy other ones because they don't fit that character and their abilities. You can also sell items for half the price listed on this card. So if I wanted to upgrade to this Croker Shield, for example, I could sell my Sticky Buckler for $35 since its price is 70. These items up here, you can also buy, they add to your defense. And so again, you can only have like one helmet, one armor, one gauntlet, and then you could have different Bellow Ales. These are basically like potions to heal yourself. Bracelet of Bouncer ability, for example, plus one to saving throws. Now where it says stackable, that means you can buy multiple of these bracelets to further increase your power. Same thing with the Cape of Mighty Biceps. These are stackable, so you could buy a bunch of these. There's also a Bitterness coin, which costs five experience, but you make another player chug their drink. Now again, the player doesn't have to do that immediately. They can choose to do it in another quest, and this can only be used once per quest and you can only buy one. So again, just another fun element if you wanna make someone chug their drink, uh, you can buy that from the shop here as well. Beyond that, you basically just go through the quests in the order that they're listed, and between each round of quests, so once you finish all of quest one, players do have the opportunity to visit their shop if they want. A player can also visit the shop before they start any turn, and beyond that, it's just the player at the end of the quest that has the most experience wins. So in this case, Sarah got 14, Joe got 16, I got three, and Brian got 10. So uh, Joe won in this case and I did very badly, but that was just the luck of the cards that came up. Beyond that, that's pretty much how you play the game. There's a couple little alternate rules you can use depending on the number of players you're playing with and if people are drinking or not. So certainly consult the rule book if you have questions on that. You can also definitely leave a comment below if you have questions. But now that you know the general idea on playing the game, let's jump into my review. Well, again, guys, now that you know a bit more on how the game works and how you play, how do I feel about it? Well, for me, when we played this game, we had a blast. It was a lot of fun. We played with four players, and it was a really fun game night playing this game. And so one thing that I really like about the game is that it's very simple to learn. You don't need to be a hardcore tabletop RPG gamer be able to learn the rules of this game. They make it pretty simple. As you saw, you pretty much just create your character following the outline. And then from there, people just take turns drawing cards 
and then dealing with the result from there. I also really like the artwork and the humor within the game, a lot of different drinking puns and funny scenarios that if you've maybe partied in college or gone out drinking with your friends, you've probably experienced some of these things, but then they take that and then turn it into a fantasy RPG type quest scenario along with it. So it's a lot of fun getting to play through those events and we had a good time doing that as well. Also, like I said, since the game is more simplified version of an RPG, I think it's pretty accessible to people. Plus it's simple to keep track, maybe if you are drinking, where there is some strategy elements to it, obviously, but not so much that it would be difficult to play while drinking. And so I think there's a good balance of that within the game. I also really enjoyed the RPG elements where I'm a big RPG gamer, I like that. And so you have that in the game too, where you're picking your individual character when you start, they have their own unique skill set and abilities. So it's funny that you've got different stat points like self-worth and sexual prowess, for example. And depending on the different scenarios you might encounter, you might not need to have a high tolerance to be able to complete the drinking quest and card that you run into. And that can further improve your stats and get you more money as you play. So again, you go through, your goal is to get the most experience as you play. And that comes from defeating monsters and acquiring more gold and buying the best equipment so you can survive these random monster encounters as you play. So again, it's like a legitimate RPG when you play, so that's really fun and I enjoyed that. I like the ability where you can go to the shop in between rounds, upgrade your armor and items to make yourself po more powerful as you play. So there is that strategy element to it as well. And obviously when you're playing, you do wanna win, but I think it was a really fun experience either way. Or when I played, I didn't do very well. Uh, in the game, just based on how the cards came up and how the rolls went, but it was still a fun time whether I was winning or losing as you played. Now the game on the box says it takes about an hour to go through. It took us maybe between an hour and two hours, but we played every single quest that's available to you. So like you saw in the how to play part of the video, there was a bunch of different quests that you would go through and you don't obviously need to do them all at once. You can split them into different nights or whatever the case might be where each individual quest doesn't necessarily take that long, but if you play them all, it's gonna take a while. Plus, obviously, if you're having a good time, you're drinking, you're hanging out with friends, you're probably gonna get distracted, get off task a little bit, you know, maybe make some snacks, whatever the case might be. So again, it's probably gonna take you maybe one to two hours to play through all of the quests in this game if you wanna do that. Now, I also think the game has a pretty good replay value to it. Certainly, the quests are, encounters that you have on the cards don't really change from game session to game session, but you shuffle them all every time. So how they come out is going to be different. If you're playing with different people, that's obviously a different experience. I think it varies also if you're playing two to four players, how many people are involved, because if you are playing with a smaller group, you're going to get more cards. And so be forced to have more battles, potentially more drinks as you play. So that could alter the experience. And then there is a bunch of different starting characters you can choose from. So you'll have a different base set, base abilities, and equipment goals that you're trying to buy as you play. So again, I think that varies up the game as well. But overall, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm super excited to check out the other versions of the Drinking Quest games because we had a lot of fun with this. So if you'd like to check this out, there'll be a link in the description below where you can pick this game up. I definitely think it's worth playing and it's a lot of fun. It's easy to learn and fun to play. And I would definitely recommend adding it to your nerd library. But if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. And if you'd like to help us support the channel, pick out content and more, become a patron of ours at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Patreon. And if you'd like to plug into our live streams and let's plays we do on the channel, you can follow us on Twitch at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you more soon.